Well, my youngest stepdaughter has just graduated in management from Indonesia's, I suppose, top business university in, in Jakarta. And so they organised the graduation in a town called, well, it was actually a place called Sentel, where we were meant to be staying. But Sentel's really a part of Bogor, which is, I mean, to be honest, it's part of Jakarta, but it, it, it likes to see itself as independent. Not least as it's in West Java rather than in Jakarta itself, but then a lot of Jakarta's in West Java. However... It does, it does see itself as very independent, not least as it's sort of the spiritual home of the Sundanese people. So in Java, I suppose there's, well, three, oh, there's probably four group, four big groups competing, um, you know, on the island. That's the Bantanese, the, who are connected to the Sundanese, the Sundanese, the Javanese, and the Madurese. So the Sunda would be the second major group on Java, and this was the historic capital of the um, of the Sunda people. As you can see, you know it, it looks a lot like Jakarta now. Um, I mean, there are some nice parts, but a lot of it is a lot of it is nothing special. In fact, it looked just like the street we live on in Jakarta. The other thing I'd say about it is they've, they, you know, I mean, I, I suppose most places have mayors and petty officials who are drunk on their own power. But, but Bogor has, has a mayor that um, uh, does the most outrageous things, particularly, you know, attacking um, gay and lesbian people on the grounds of his, his Islam. Uh, oh, also, you're not allowed to smoke at all in any of the hotels, you know. Um, and, and this is in a... <coughs> <coughs> in a country where everyone smokes, as you can hear. So, yeah, it, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth, actually, the, the mayor and his antics. You know, the, there's, there's no need for it, is there? But anyway, it was, it was the graduation, so off we went to, to this place, Bogor. So Bogor, as I say, really is the capital of the Sunda people and the Sunda kingdom, which goes back to oh the tenth century, I suppose. Um, although it didn't establish the Sunda kingdom until the fifteenth century, uh, but the capital, as I say, was really in Bogor. It was known as uh, Pajajaran, and the most famous king of the time was um, um, Prabhu Silawangi. So, you know, people are very, people are very um, protective over Bogor and, and over its cultural heritage. Um, it, it has a different language to Javanese. It has a different alphabet to Javanese. Um, and, you know, it, it, it was a separate sultanate. Um, they fought with the Javanese many times, but there were many times when they were overtaken by the Javanese as well. Um, it was um, mostly a Hindu um, kingdom, although it, it was it was a sort of a Hindu Buddhist kingdom in as much as it was um, uh, Shaivistic or Tantric, um, really. So, yeah, people, people are very protective of it. There are parts to it which are very nice. Uh, but, you know, where we were staying, it, as I say, it just feels like Jakarta. And one of the nicer parts would be the presidential palace. So it has a, a presidential palace. And not the presidential palace, but a presidential palace. Uh, particularly where the president entertains foreign dignitaries. Um, so, you know, that that's a very nice part of it. And it's actually in the Botanical Gardens or the Kebon Raya, uh, which was, was actually developed by Governor Raffles in the short period that he was governor of the island of Java. 
So very beautiful surroundings there. Um, lovely day out from Jakarta as well to the Kebon Raya. Now, although Bogor is the sort of capital of, or the historic capital of the Sunda people, it's not the capital of West Java, which is in Bandung. So Bogor is, as I suppose, overshadowed by both Jakarta and Bandung. Um, it would be a little bit closer to Jakarta than Bandung, although perhaps culturally is, is closer to, to Bandung. Um, and it was on the old road to Bandung, which went over the Punchak Pass, which is a, a beautiful, beautiful area, um, full of uh, tea, tea plantations, uh, absolutely beautiful. And the weather does get quite a bit cooler there. So, you know, if you come up from Jakarta, you can get a bit of, you know, you can cool down a little by going up to Punchak. And it is a sort of an alpine-like resort. Unfortunately, it's so beautiful that um, the traffic has just made it absolutely impossible now. And, yeah, it's, it's probably not worth going to now because the traffic is just crazy. Because, of course, it's just a small mountain pass, you know, and it's, it's not capable of taking a level of traffic that there is. So we ended up staying more or less in the centre of Bogor at the Prajadaran Hotel, which, if you remember, was the name of the old capital. Um, what can I say? Well, it was a mid-range hotel, and, you know, I, I suppose most most mid-range hotels in Indonesia, are, well, in Asia, are pretty good, you know. Um, but it wasn't in a particularly attractive part of the town, and I couldn't say it was a particularly attractive hotel. Um, we should have stayed at the Harris, which was in Central, which is where the graduation was. But um, a relative, oh, that's a long story, doesn't matter. Uh, a relative um, arranged to sort out the hotel one month before we needed it. And, and indeed a makeover for my daughter and took the money. And then the day before we were due to leave, we were told that there were the hotel wasn't available, nor had they got a makeover for her. So my daughter, you know, she cried for about two hours until this one got sorted out, and a makeover. But, you know, it was it was a few miles, well, a good few miles from where the graduation was. As it happened, the graduation was such a... It was, it was organised so badly that it really didn't matter. But, um, you know... Yeah, it, it didn't go that well, I've got to say. Fortunately, there was a, a lovely restaurant. Just Well, it looked lovely. The, the food was, was okay. I, I suspect it was one of the better restaurants in Bogor. But there was a lovely restaurant just opposite where we went uh, both that evening and then we, we returned the next day after the graduation with some of, some of my daughter's friends by way of a celebration. And... I, I suppose that the design was sort of fairly typical of Indonesia, something that people in Bali would be very used to. But, you know, it was it was quite attractive for this. What I think has become something of a scruffy little town is Bogor. I know people from there would be horrified at hear me, hearing me say it, but I don't think it's that special these days, I've got to be honest. My, my daughter or stepdaughter had to get to the graduation ceremony, which, as I say, was a few miles away, uh, four, seven o'clock in the morning. And that meant that she had to start her makeover at three o'clock in the morning. So, you know, it, it was a very, very long day for us. So she got up at three. I mean, she looked beautiful, as, as you'll see. Uh, but, you know, it was a very long and stressful day. Well, incredibly stressful. Like I couldn't couldn't imagine, couldn't begin to describe how stressful it was to you. You know, getting up at that time <coughs> to get ready for this graduation. Um, as I say, it was in Central. Now Central is a 
Um, well, it's yeah, it's 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 the beginning of the mountains, but it's it's actually to the Jakarta side of Bogor. So it's 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 the beginning of the mountains, but it was developed by a Indonesian businessman and politician, Albuja Bakri, who you know is 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 a selfless, absolutely selfless um, business person, committed to ethical business and committed to environmental causes. You know, a, a true hero of the people. So, so he built this, this central, this new city, almost, in this area of, uh, of Bogor. And, you know, in the middle of the mountains, you'll see high-rise apartments and hotels and what have you, and shopping malls. Um, you know, and, and, and unfortunately, you know, people... People don't understand Abuja's Bakri's genius because of what do they do? But they, you know, they far too many people come to it and overpower its its um, you know its car parks and its its infrastructure because you know he, he really cares about it, really cares about the environment, and he, he there's no way he'd build a city, you know, a new city full of full of tower blocks. In the mountains, just just for money. No, you know, he, 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 everything he does is for the Indonesian people. I think the graduation ceremony itself was an example of how people don't share in Bakri's wonderful vision for the people of Indonesia. Uh, because of, you know, they booked for 4,611 people to graduate on that day. And quite frankly, you know, I mean, had only 4,611 people come, the infrastructure could probably have coped with it. But of course, there were their families. You know, there were their families wanting to come to the graduation as well. And it it totally overpowered the infrastructure. I mean, so much so that not only were the the, the roads off the toll road, or the motorway, if you, you know, in English terms, uh, you know, the link roads were absolutely jammed with traffic, just like central Jakarta. But so was the, so was the toll roads itself, the, the you know, the... Uh, the motorway, if you like, uh, they were absolutely jammed. There was nothing like enough car parking, needless to say. And, you know, the whole event was, it was one of chaos, absolute chaos. There's nothing like enough planning had gone into it. You know, 4,611 in one day, they, they should have aimed for sort of about 500 and, the, you know, we at first we were told that we weren't going to be allowed into the hall. So just my two daughters went in. But later we found out we could. But, you know, outside was just milling with people trying to get in. And we'd also been told that, you know, it was all going to be digitised and we'd have to wear a mask. And um, if we coughed, we would be ejected, you know. This sort of digital authoritarianism that seems to be creeping in any everywhere, but particularly in Indonesia, and of course, no, everybody ignored it, and it was just a total, total shambles. And you know, given that this is the leading business university in Indonesia, it, it doesn't say much, does it? It really doesn't say much. I mean, it says nothing for customer service. You know, it says nothing for says nothing for organisation and planning and, you know, uh, yeah, it, it, it was, it was a most regrettable day. It really was, it really was. Have I said enough? <laughs> now, fortunately, my two stepdaughters aren't as curmudgeonly as I and they were determined to make the best of a bad job so despite I think everything being a complete disaster I mean my daughter got there at seven and she didn't receive a degree until 2.30 
you know, absolutely outrageous, outrageous. Um, but you know, despite everything, despite everything, I think love and human nature shines through. And no matter how much that people want to impose this sort of digital authoritarian on us. I've got faith that people just are going to be people, especially my two daughters.